It was a long time ago, in a small village near Ayetoro town, there lives a young woman called Alake. Alake is an orphan and also one of the king's concubines. She is the one who let down Ogunjimilei's body from the stake, washed his body and gave him a befitting barrier. And now she is advocating for peace among the chief priest, the other abalist, and the king. King Abegunde killed one of our own, the chief priest said. Ogunjimilei, a man who stood by the king all his life, he prepared the sacred sacrifice of long life for the king. He even gave the king his only child to be his concubine. If we don't fight for his death by not preparing the sacrifice of long life for the king, then I think we have betrayed a good man. One of the herbalists, Awogbade, also added, We must stand for one another. But the other herbalist, Awotono, said nothing. So Alake spoke, Wise one, I'm glad you allow me to be in your midst has honor to burying one of your kind, Ogunji Milei. But if we don't prepare the sacrifice of long life for the king, the king will die. Don't let us pay evil with evil deeds. But that is what the king did by killing Ogunji Milei, the chief priest said. Whatsoever a man sow, he shall reap. But the protest in front of the palace is even more worrisome than the priest's refusal to prepare the sacrifice of long life for the king. Mojoyi, the leader of the king's concubine, stepped forward. Enough is enough. We have given so much to the king, yet received nothing. Yes, the other woman shouted. We have risked our life to the evil forest for the king. I even lost an arm in the process, but I am glad I returned. Many did not, yet the king does not appreciate us. We want a better life, no more killing of our sons and daughters. Yes, the other women shouted. Hawotono, the king called. How is the situation? Bami, save me. Kabiesi, Awotono said. I think you should pacify your concubines. You are a man, the king. But they are demanding that I stop killing their children. How can I do that? But Kabiesi, Awotono said to the king. Remember that if a house is peaceful, is because the bastard child is yet to grow. Hmm. The king breathed deeply. So the king stepped out of his chamber. I, King Abegunde, commanded that you all shall carry the sacrifice of long life for me, and I shall yield not to your demands. I am the king. And I have authority over everyone. But as the king turned to take his leave, Mojoyi, the leader of the king's concubine, snapped her fingers at the king. We shall show you the power of a woman. The king went back to Awotono. There is fire on the mountain. Kabiesi. I shall prepare the sacred sacrifice of long life for you. But my concubines are not ready to carry the sacrifice to the evil forest, the king interrupted. Yes, I know, said Awotono, but I know of one, Alake. I will empower her with strength and power of ten women. She will carry the sacrifice and succeed. Are you sure? All my concubines hate me, said the king. But not Alake, not Alake, Awotono said. She spoke in favor of you. That night, Alake went into the king's chamber 
to meet with the king. But at midnight, she sneaked out of the king's chamber to go to her room. When a mysterious stranger came and kidnapped her and took her to Mojoin. What are you doing with the king? said Mojoin. I went to warm his bed, replied Alake. <laughs> warm his bed? Are you not aware that we are in disagreement with the king? Not I. I'm in love with the king, said Alake. <laughs> Mojoin couldn't hold a laughter. Listen, young woman. The king can never repay your love or kindness. Don't you know what he did to Ogunjimilei, the man you buried? I know, said Alake. I don't think you know, Mojoin replied. The king killed Ogunjimilei because he saved his only daughter, Amokwe, from being killed by the king. But Amokwe to betray the king by sleeping with another man. Alake completed the story. Amokwe even have the guts of getting pregnant for the man. Abomination. I can see that you are blinded by love for the king. Pick some senses into her. While I go and get the eggs of power. Still in the middle of the night, all the concubines gathered in Mojoin's room. With these eggs, we shall show the king that we are not his puppets. Take one each and eat, and after I clap three times, you all should rest your leg to the wall. They all picked the egg, but Alake did not eat her egg. And when Mojoin clapped three times, Alake did not rest her leg on the wall. Shockingly to Alake, everyone who rested their legs on the wall disappeared leaving only her uh, in Mojoin's room. Alake raised the alarm. Awotono, we need to act fast, said the king. My concubines have turned to witches, disappearing in the middle of the night. My life is not safe anymore. The sacrifice of long life must be carried now. Awotono strengthened Alake and gave her a gun. With this gun, anything that comes your way in the evil forest, shoot at it and it shall die. I mean anything or anyone. But Alake also made a demand, requesting that the king sign a seal with his blood, that the child in her womb will become the king in future. Because the king is desperate, a sign with his blood. So Alake carried the sacrifice of long life with the fortification of the gun in her hand. The journey was successful. The king became young and full of vitality. Kill her! The king said to Awotono. But Awotono had forgotten that the gun is still in Alake's hand. She pointed the gun to Awotono and shot him. She turned the gun to the king. After all I have done for you, Alake said to the king and shot the king with the gun. And that is how the reign of King Abdegunde came to an end. Alake showed the seal signed with the king's blood to the villagers and the chief priest. The chief priest crowned Alake, the queen of the village, pending the time a child will mature and sit on the throne. I said it, that whatsoever a man sow, he shall reap. The chief priest concluded. Please subscribe to Story Story. Thank you for watching.